Hello, and welcome to Twilight Thoughts. My name is Bryce, and I'll be your host for today. We'll begin in a moment, but first I'd like to let you know that soon you will be entertained by news, reports, scandal, and of course, speculation. Bryce the to Tower, we are ready for takeoff. So it's the middle of October, and even so, the Academy has just released its list of 32 movies that are nominated for the Best Animated Movie of 2019. Hooray! Let's look at that real quick. In alphabetical order, it's Abominable, The Addams Family, The Angry Birds Movie 2, Another Day of Life, Away, Brunel in the Labyrinth of the Turtles, Children of the Sea, Dilly in Paris, Frozen 2, Funan. Gendy Tartakovsky's Primal, Tales of Savagery, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, I Lost My Body, Claws, The Lost Fiction, The Lego Movie 2, The Second Part, Morona's Fantastic Tale, Missing Link, Niza, Okazin, Pachamama, Promare, Rizo, The Secret Life of Pets 2, Spies in Disguise, The Swallows of Kabul, and if that's not a sequel, to the Guardians of Gahul, the Owl movie, I am going to be blown away, because it should be. This Magnificent Cake, The Tower, Toy Story 4, Oopin' and Ippin', The Lone Given Chris, Weathering With You, and White Snake. Now, because we are a Disney podcast here, we are going to be focusing in on two of the entries here. It's going to be Frozen 2 and Toy Story 4. Now, when Toy Story 4 was announced... I was very much against the movie. I said, I don't want this movie to happen. My trilogy wrapped up nice and clean. Why are we going to change this? Why are we going to add to this? Why are we going to convolute this? And I'm happy to say that when I saw it, I was blown away. I loved Toy Story 4. It was sad. It was. The ending of the movie was really able to get to me, but... Was it Toy Story 3 sad? I say nay nay. Toy Story 3 was horribly sad. Just watching him give the toys away. Oh man, people were crying at the furnace. I was like, come on people, we know the furnace isn't going to kill the toys. But then when he gives them away, and you can see how much love he has for these characters, and you know how much love that those characters have for Andy, it's sad. It's sad. But, it does leave an opening for a Toy Story 4, so be it. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Toy Story 4. It was one of the few movies that I wanted to see again this summer that I actually got to. And I know my wife saw it like three times, I think. It was a great movie. Now obviously, I can't speak to Frozen 2. Why? Because it's not out yet. Well then Bryce, how can it be nominated? Because Disney nominates their own movies, right? So they say... This movie did really well with critics and at the box office. This is going to be a shoe win. Or, hey, you know what? From what this other movie did, we can feel like this movie is going to do even more than that. We're really excited about this movie. We're going to do that. And that's what people are saying about Frozen 2, which is very, very exciting. Because I am a big fan of Frozen. I know it's not the popular thing to say really anymore. Like, the popular thing is, the cool thing is to say, ah, Frozen sucks. That movie does not suck movie is very very good there's a reason everybody seemed to be humming those songs for so long after they went to go see the movie it's because they were infectious and the characters were lovable and memorable and they got stuck in your head and there was no way that that could happen if it was a bad movie it just doesn't happen so needless to say i am very excited about frozen 2 i cannot wait to see this movie and just as like a little sidebar Frozen 2 is tracking to make double what Frozen 1 made on its opening weekend. That's monstrous. That's crazy. That doesn't happen. Right? It just doesn't happen. And so for Frozen 2 to be tracking like that, it's very encouraging, not only to me as a fan who's excited to see the movie to see what they do, but it's also encouraging to Disney that says, hey, you know what? We're excited about this movie. Audiences are excited about this movie. The odds of this movie doing well 
are very high. Let's go ahead and nominate this movie for Best Animated Picture. And honestly, if it's going up against a movie like The Secret Life of Pets 2, wow. Wow. I'm not being biased here. I want to go see good movies. I like movies. More importantly, I like animated movies. And I went to go see The Secret Life of Pets 2 knowing that The Secret Life of Pets was fantastic. I loved that movie. I had a really good time with that movie. I thought it was hysterical. I was rolling in my chair watching that movie. The Secret Life of Pets 2 is awful. The Secret Life of Pets 2 is really not a good movie at all. It's a very disjointed movie, and it's just a chore to watch, really, is how I felt about it when I was watching it. So, if that's the kind of material that it's going up against, Frozen 2 very well may be a shoe-in to win Best Animated Feature. Now, that's not why I wanted to talk about this here. The reason I wanted to talk about this was because of the lack of one of the animated movies that Disney put out this year, The Lion King. The Lion King, when it came out in 1994, was a phenom. This movie blew people away. So when they announced a remake, people did one of two things. They both got really excited, and then they also said, do not screw this up. This is my childhood. Do not make this bad. Okay, Disney had a little bit of work to do to make sure things went smoothly, right? Well, Disney put $260 million into the budget for this movie, and they had Jon Favreau, the guy who directed the Jungle Book remake, come in and direct the remake of The Lion King and have it done in the same art style, the same animation technique to make it photorealistic, right? So everyone was saying, oh, it's a live-action Lion King, it's a live-action Lion King, but they were wrong. Like, that's just not what it was. It was an animated movie. There was one shot in the entire movie, not even a scene, a shot in the entire movie that was actually live action, and that's kind of what let them say, oh, it's a live action movie. Otherwise, every single thing you see on your screen, be it a speck of dust, be it a blade of grass, or a strand of hair, whatever, it's all animated. It's all digital. It's all put there by a computer. And so it blew me away when people were saying, oh, it's a live action movie, and then arguing with me that point of, oh, it's a live action movie. It's not. It looks live action, sure, but it's just a higher end version of animation. Okay, fine. So by definition then, this movie would then qualify to be in the best animated category at the Oscars. Well, Bryce, you said that if it had a good box office and the critics liked it, there was a good chance that it would be picked up to be nominated for the best animated movie, right? Yes, and its box office did gangbusters, man. Like I said, the budget was $260 million, and it brought in $1.6 billion at the box office. That's a lot of money. That is the seventh highest growing movie in the world of all time. It's truly staggering how much money that this movie made. It's seventh behind Avengers Endgame, Avatar, Titanic, Star Wars The Force Awakens, Avengers Infinity War, and Jurassic World. All but one of those movies made over $2 billion. This movie did very well at the box office. This movie did very well at the box office. Well, then Bryce, if it did so well at the box office, then why isn't it not nominated for Best Animated Feature? My only guess would be that the critics were divided. I know that I didn't like the movie very much, not saying that I am a critic at all. At the best, I'm a pundit. I like to talk about what's going on. But I'm not a film critic, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have that refined palette, if you will. I, I went to animation school, I didn't go to film school, but... Be that as it may, I know a little bit of stuff, but I wouldn't say that I'm a critic. What I would say is that I've given my opinion. I saw the movie, and I didn't really care for it all that much. It lacked the power that the original one had, and I don't know if that's because we were expecting so much from it, but it just didn't have that punch. It didn't have that, that thing that grabbed you and sucked you in. The songs were lacking, I'll be honest. Even though they were the same songs from the original one, just the new arrangements, the new strings, the new orchestra, the new singers, 
none of it really hit as hard as they wanted it to, and that's sad. I don't know if it was the animation style or what it is, but regardless, we are not here to review The Lion King, we are here to talk about its lack of nomination. As for why this movie didn't get nominated by Disney, if I had to take a guess, I would say that there can only be one winner. Why would you put up a film that was divisive? Why would you put up a film that was split down the center of, you know, 50% of people liked it, 50% of people didn't? Uh, why would you roll the dice on that movie when you have a, what you think is a knockout film in Frozen 2 and you have a monstrous success in Toy Story 4? Instead of nominating three movies and then splitting the votes three ways, you have better odds of winning between those two films that were really well received and did really well versus the three films where two of them did really well and one was a bit of a bomb. Even though it did so well financially, critically, it didn't do well. It just didn't do well. I mean, those are my thoughts on it anyway. That would be, like I said, my guess. What are your thoughts? Is there any reason you can think of why Disney wouldn't nominate The Lion King? Would you have nominated The Lion King if you were the head of Disney? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I really do want to know what you say because eh, I'm interested. And the whole point of these is to have a conversation. So where can you find us? That is an excellent question. Clearly, you found us somehow because you're listening to my voice. But if you want to find us in other places, you can find us on iTunes, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud. Those are the places that you can find me personally. On Twitter, it's at Disney Nocturnal. And on Instagram, it's at the Nocturnal Disney Podcast, all separated by underscores. You can email me if you like at Bryce at the Nocturnal Disney Podcast.com. And you can find this show, the Nocturnal Disney Podcast, Twilight Thoughts along with its parent show, The Nocturnal Disney Podcast, which is a much longer format with me and my buddy Chris. And you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Newgrounds, and Spotify. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this. I really do appreciate it. It allows me to continue to do this. It allows me to talk to you guys. Because if I wasn't talking to anybody, I would just be screaming out into the ether. And I don't want to do that. Who wants to do that? Nobody. But guys, thank you for listening. And please... Hurry back, hurry back, we're dying to have you.